All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Alone in the Dark. Again, I want to thank everybody for all the love that you guys showed the last episode. Um, this game is pretty damn cool, pretty cool. And there's two sides of the story. Uh, right now we are playing uh, Edward, which as you guys know is the sheriff from um, Stranger Things. So it's been really, really cool to uh, see how this game has been you know, unfolding. I can't wait to see what the hell's uh, in store for us today. So again, if you guys do want more of this, potentially even jump into the you know the other character side of the story and just continue to show that love smash that like button subscribe drop comment down below let me know what you guys thought and uh yeah we'll keep it going guys we will keep it going all right so let's not waste any time and let's get this going <laughs> Okay, yeah, so we dropped into the uh, the cemetery area um, at the end of the last episode. Let me take stock. We got a bit of ammo there. We got the shotgun. Okay. Caspi, what's up, brother? I didn't think you'd be back already. How you doing today, man? So far, everything seems pretty chill. I forgot what button was the flashlight. I forgot. I play so many games, guys. I forget the damn buttons. Flashlight was B. I knew it was a weird button. The Hartwoods family crypt. Emily's family must have deeper roots in New Orleans than I thought. I figured she was a Yankee like me. Got a chest up this way. Got some shoddy shells. Cast me definitely, bro. Oh, you jumped in right as I ended the last one. Yeah, I feel like this one's definitely your style, dude. All right, so we got a key item here. What's this? Probably goes right in this door here, right? No, what do we got here? Um, we're gonna have to rotate it. Straight up and down. Yep. Got it. Okay, so we got a sledgehammer here. say the melee in this game is so much more useful than any other like game like this generally you play like resident evil games and stuff like the melee is absolute not not great um it's not bad on this one i 
Okay, looks like we're missing three discs here. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna have to go around probably getting the other two. We could probably Remember put the- Let me sketch this chapel in his book, so it must be important. Looks like I'll need more medallions to open it, though. We're gonna need three. Pistol bullets. Baddies down here. Might actually use the shoddy. No, we use the shovel. We use the save our shoddy just in case we got any like. a lot of damage. Quantum, what's going on? How you doing? Um, so yeah, we'll be playing Sons of Force within the next day or so. Uh, we just had a lot of new games drop all at once, so a lot of stuff that we wanted to check out. Well, probably tomorrow or something like that. You heal up. So I don't have very much ammo left for the handgun. Molly worked nice. Well, we actually got a good bit of pistol ammo right there. Obviously, we're gonna have a fight in here. I could see. Gonna make sure we use these mollies too. They're so good.
Okay, so it looks like we have two different ways we can go down. We'll start going in here first. One of the desks. That's two down. That one looks trapped. I don't know if that. Oh, what was in here? Okay, so this is the way we came in. Got it. No, we're still doing sons of the. Where's people getting that? The idea that we're not doing any Sons of the Forest streams. So we actually, oh nice, we got two right now. Hmm. So I wonder if they're both supposed to be straight up and down. 
No, it's got to match up. There it is. I've been secretly telling everybody. <laughs> How to Dragon Dogma, Rise of Ronin, Alone in the Dark, which one am I enjoying the most? Oh man, that's that's quite difficult because they're all such different games. Um, I don't know, maybe this one? Or, I don't know, Dragon Dogma is pretty sick too. They're just so different though. I'm supposed to just run. Had a run, dude. A third. Now, what do we got here? Oh, there's a dodge. I didn't know there was a dodge. Tank, what's going on? Thank God that's over. <sighs> oh, fuck you.
I'm pretty sure these got to line up on the inside here with each other. Overlap like that. So I wonder if I got to cover... No, because there's no way to cover all of them. So those ones are completely covered. I wonder if we got to get them all so they're upward. Go there. So they all had to be facing straight up and down, and then all the little rings had to be overlapping. Chainsaw, thank you so much for the membership. Welcome to the family, and the crews with the 19 months. I appreciate it. Uh, new games are busting, busting. Let's go. Hey, I'm glad you're enjoying them, dude. Please don't touch her. Jeremy. What are you doing here? Everyone's looking for you. I know. It, it's all a big mess. No one understands. I, I'm just trying to keep evil at bay. Just for a little while longer. You've got to come back with me. Your niece is waiting at Dorsetto. Emily? Why would you... My letter. I keep making it worse. What is going on, Jeremy? How is any of this happening? I made... I made a terrible promise with some... The Dark Man. Who is he? No, 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 don't say his name! He can hear us! He's always listening. Jeremy... I need to understand what is going on. I promised him everything. The sun rises, I will be chained in his sunken desert temple for an eternity. But at least the evil about to awaken and to settle won't harm anyone outside of that cursed place. You're acting crazy, Jeremy. I want to help. There's nothing you can do. Then what's all the business about Teruea? Why did you want to go there? Well, I can't go there. I'm not allowed. But you wanted to. Can I go? Tell me, will it help me to break your pact? Is there something there that would help? Why would you give me hope? That's so cruel. Okay. Sounds like we're onto something here. What should Look I- Look out! Behind you! Run! Don't let him take you! God damn, Jeremy. Ugh. 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 
Damn. Tim with the super chat, brother. How you doing tonight, man? Sorry, I I, I did I, I know that it was supposed to be beer mugs in it up, but I uh I 100 percent um muted the alert box because I couldn't have it going off in the middle of a cutscene. So loving the vibe of this game so far. <laughs> appreciate it man and big mike with the super chat if princess kate was a ghost where would she haunt I, I don't know all right hold on give me one sec guys give me one second Chat, we got the we got the snow coming down here. Holy crap! I've seen so many strange occurrences lately. Memories explode into existence and then bind out like tide glass bulb filaments. Dreamscapes crash down from the stars and sink into the sea. Doors that lead to nowhere and absolutely everywhere at once. With all this reverie, I want to think there's a chance that you found a way to remain alive in some way I cannot fathom. Just like I've learned to navigate with my talisman, maybe you, with all your knowledge, you somehow knew a way, a way to find me again, perhaps in Tarawaya. Oh, my love, Jeremy. All right, so we got the luggage key. So is this, is she dead? She's dead. No matter how she died, she looks peaceful now. Yeah, I just went and talked to him. Babe. All right, let's check our map. Let's see what we got going here. So our objective is... body looked unharmed. Combi couldn't figure out how she did. Okay, so this goes on the... Um... The magnifying glass or the telescope. The telescope lens. Why would he lock that up? Emily is here. Emily is here. What room did we see that telescope? And it was over in the near the study, right? I think it was in the study. I don't remember. Let me see. So we're currently here in the gallery. This. No, I think it was over. We'll check in here. I don't believe it was in here, though. 
looks like some kind of rot. I think it was off of the room that we got the shotgun in. There's something missing. Where is, I mean, I'm curious to play Emily's side just because I really don't understand what the hell is going on right now. Like, where is she? I'm doing all this television. You tell me she's still in the office talking to Dr. Gray. Yeah, so this was the... No, this wasn't it. This was. So we gotta adjust the focus now. got to play her side to get the full story that's what people were saying caspi that you got to play uh both sides of the story in order or or both characters in order to get the full story okay so we just gotta move these around what the fuck is that oh okay it's just a statue Nine four one. That was actually really hard to see because of the way the. Whoa! What's going on? It's dialing in something all on its own, and it's showing the way to another memory. Where is that? Is that where the piano fell? I think, yeah, I think that might be uh, where the piano fell. Give me one sec.
Another world seeping into the, In the dining room. So let's check the map here. Dining room is here, so. I'm glad to see you made it. I had my doubts, but the hope you instilled has yet abandoned me. I guess this must be Tarawea. Who are you? My name is Juan Luis Jorge, and this is indeed the convent of Tarawea. You'll have to excuse me, but Yermi never got your name. The name's Edward Carnby. I'm a private investigator. You're not a patient, are you? No. I'm the author of a book that Yermi once found important. How does that work? Are you part of this memory as well? Is this even a memory? I think calling me a manifestation of Yermi's subconscious would be more correct. And so is the convent of Tarawea. I'm a man Yermi has never met. And we are in a place that he has never been. Okay. So are you here to guide me or something? I have no more purpose than you do. I simply am. I will happily help you, of course, if I'm able. If you are already somehow part of Jeremy, why did he want to come here? Isn't he sort of here already? Jeremy wanted to come here because it's a representation of his mind at peace. When Dr. Gray asks him to find his focus during his sessions, this far-flung convent is what Jeremy imagines. He is under the impression that if he could physically come here, he would reach a perfect equanimity. A spiritual apotheosis. You don't think it would work? Jeremy subconsciously knows it's just wishful thinking. He can't come here. Despite the pathways opened by the dark man between their seto and Jeremy's psyche, it's simply not possible. But I'm here. <laughs> Indeed. It's a shame it's just another place for you, detective. Otherwise, you could have become a Buddha. Always a bridesmaid, never a blushing bride. Am I right? <laughs> yes, I suppose so. You'll have to chase enlightenment elsewhere. So what's the next best thing? What can I do here? You should seek out the convent library and try to find the truth about Yermi's relationship with the Dark Man. It's the sort of knowledge he represses and is unable to reflect on. Will it tell me how to break the pact? Perhaps. At least you'll have something to confront Yermi with. Wait, why can't you just tell me? I don't know such things. You'd be better off consulting the text of Dr. Freud if you want such answers. <laughs> no thanks, I hate shrinks. There is another thing you should know about the library. He is here as well. The dark man has been working his way through the text for a long, long time. He's here? How am I supposed to get past him? Be careful, detective. Oh, jeez. Just perfect.
So that last little encounter with Jeremy was the first time that we've even been face to face with the dark man. And map doesn't work here, right? Yeah, of course. Definitely one of more of the the more peaceful areas we've been so far. Nice area. Great library it was endless, beautiful, and terrible. An Akashic record for the universe inside the mind of Jeremy Hartwood. Now corrupted by a story forced upon him, told by a maniacal liar, an evil conjured by science and secrecy. I will suspend a room and lock away the foundation of his character. Its key will be left to the librarian, the only thing invisible to the Prowler. What do you mean why I'm always trying to kill statues? Dude, that, that thing was, just came at me, bro. I came around that corner and it was just there, dude. Look, and there's blood.
Let me see if we can squeeze through there. for this one. Bull worship is common throughout history. For Christians, this can be seen in Exodus when the Israelites turn to worship a golden calf in Moses' absence. This passage shows the people falling back to the worship witnessed in Egypt, known as the Habas Bull. Another famous example is the Minoans on the island of Crete. Their worship of the bull gave rise to the myth of the Minotaurus, the half-man, half-bull monster that reigned the labyrinth. But for this particular case, I think I should tell you about the deity Astarte that brought the Taurus constellation to life to attack Gilgamesh. Even for a mythical hero, this celestial bull proved difficult to defeat. Only by distracting the bull with a golden sail was Gilgamesh able to pierce an eye with the spear which bled the bull to death.
I feel like we're on like two different planes and like if I got like bumped into him or something like then it would have set him off or some shit. hot autumn that I went through the night with the restless crowds. He was a kind of itinerant showman who held forth in public halls and aroused widespread fear. The New Orleans address of the event is lost, but I remember distinctly the Prext shipping company pressing their contribution. Hey. What? What? I hope you found what you were looking for. I fear there is no going back. I was so close. There must be something I can work with. Come on, Carmby, think. Think. You're here, detective. Sitting all alone in a place like this. I'd never live it down if the papers got Papa, how you it. doing? Hey. Ruth, right? Oh, don't pretend you don't know. I'm sure you have a whole file on me by now, detective. I suppose we weren't formally introduced. I'm Ruth Talon. Miss Ruth Talon, in case you're wondering. Edward Carnby. Enchanté. Are you sure? I had too many already. Bro, stop drinking random shit these people are giving me. This is probably why I'm tripping balls. Oh, nice. It's good. <laughs> I know. I have great taste, detective. I heard you're trying to break Jeremy's promise to the dark man. Yeah. Do you know anything about that kind of stuff? No. But it makes you wonder. If he made a promise, can't he simply stand by his words? Look, I'm just trying to get Jeremy out of a bad deal, so he'll come back with us to New Orleans. Well, if all fails... What are you doing? <laughs> It's a sign of submission to the dark man. I saw it in a dream once. What? Helpful with the upgrade. Thank you so much, dude. You don't know the Prext shipping company by any chance. I do. They made big money <clears throat> during the war. But their waterfront office is just over there. How did you do that? Do what, detective? <laughs> Bonne chance. Hey, have you seen Emily Hartwood anywhere? Are you trying to make me jealous, detective? 
No, I haven't seen your doll anywhere. Well, Alpha, that is huge. I really appreciate that. Veteran Survivor membership, man. That is crazy big, dude. And G-Man with the Super Chat. It's got back from family dinner. I uh, had to come over and show some love. Uh, what do you say about the game? Uh, I, I, I think it's a lot of fun, G-Man. Yeah, it's 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 pretty damn good, man. It's got like, you know, it's kind of like one of those like classic like Resident Evil style games. It's obviously way more modern, though. Uh, people said that this is actually the game that inspired the original version of this game is actually the game that inspired Resident Evil. Prex's shipping company. According to the book in Tarawea, the Dark Man is connected to a performance that Jeremy went to somewhere in New Orleans. I'm sure I can find the address inside. Well, the story's pretty good, though. It's locked from the other side. Of course it is. Could never be that easy. You just walk up, open the door. You know what I mean? Do I understand it though? Super confused. So yeah, I mean, they're, they're, you know, this is kind of like one of those Alan Wake style games where you're supposed to be confused. You know what I mean? Uh, not really understanding what's going on, and then we'll get to a point where you know all the answers are answered. Hi Brian, are what's answered. up, bro? I just got back from a family dinner. I had to come over and show some love. What do you say about the game worth buying? Good throw. Just killed myself with that, seriously. Okay, sewer entrance is over there. So that's where we probably gotta make our way. The sewer system has a tunnel running right below Preg's shipping company. I bet I can use it to get inside. Completely out of heels now.
It's never that easy, chat. Tim, thank you so much, man. Dropping the five gifted on the channel, brother. I really do appreciate you, man. Everybody receives a membership. Welcome to the family. Make sure you get those hearts in the chat. See my hair showing that love. Ugh. All right, we're in there now. Give it our key. Trying to use all these weapons of opportunity here. Have I seen Shutter Island? Oh, yeah. It's kind of what I was comparing this uh, game to last stream. Machine gun cartridges. That's new. Now all we need is a freaking machine gun. That'd be nice. There was no doorway back here, right? That's a good molly.
I don't want to waste resources on those guys. there right now. Inside the warehouse. The office must be upstairs. Got a lot of mollies down here. Fire poker.
Oh, there it is, the, the machine gun. Hey, I always wanted to try one of these. Tommy gun, baby. Say hello to my little friend. Our ship was raided while in dock. All of his things were recovered, but blood was shed. Several men were carried into the Mississippi River and drowned by ones who live in the deep. All items have now been signed and delivered. Now let's keep the paper safe. What is left? Later is right. And hell is back again. Hmm? We got all the ammo, dude. Had something to do with this note that we just got. What is left later is right. Hell is back again. So it's trying to decipher what is what, what is later, and what is hell for the combination. Let's go. Five, five, four. <laughs> no, I thought it was five or four, five, four, but that didn't work. If there's any more information around the warehouse to figure that out. Oh, what was it for left first? Oh, hold on. Four. Five. Oh, yeah. So I was right with the numbers, chat. I just went the wrong way. So the, where I got 454 was with the number of letters in each word. Yep, 
Yeah, and I went the wrong. Gotta go manifesto. September 19th, 1892. Breck Shipping Company delivered four steamer trunks, one Egyptian sarcophagus, and a large wooden crate belonging to the showman called the Black Pharaoh, performing at Gaitin Street. Here we go. The address where Jeremy first encountered the Dark Man. Seen many Rob Zombie films? I mean, I don't really know any Rob Zombie films. Was that uh, Seed of Chucky or one of the Chucky movies like had Rob Zombie music in it, I think? trying to conserve ammo, you know, I didn't want to just go all out. See the teaser for the new Alien movie? No, I haven't, Casper. I still haven't even watched the other ones. I started the first one and I fell asleep about 15 minutes into it. Looks like the fog cleared up. As we're looking for is just on the street size. Probably this place. <sighs> Trying to check these little stalls here, see if there's any bullets. Check around the side here, because that's open. I want to see what was back here. The Black Pharaoh. I know they said in that shipping manifest there was a, uh, Egyptian sarcoc sarcococophagus. Just leave it alone, chat. Sarcophagus. Whatever. They probably needed it for the Pharaoh show, which also looks like the Dark Man. Think of think sarcophagus now, really? You just couldn't let it go, guys. You couldn't let it go. This shit is tall as fuck.
You want to tell me what this is all about? Welcome, detective. To the greatest show this side of the Mississippi. Now the hotel, the Black Pharaoh, the ancient magician who lived a thousand lives and wore a thousand masks. I can see why you settled on calling him the Dark Man. Saves your breath. So you got scared by a stage magician, and now he's living inside your head. You can mock me, detective. You would be the crazy one to think his presence can be ignored. Look where we are! We didn't get to finish our last conversation, did we? You were about to tell me how to break the contract with the Dark Man. No, we can't. We were trying to loose on the world. So many innocent would die. But there is a way to break out of the deal. There is. You offered me a way out. Steps to take. What are they? You'll never find them. They're forever entombed in his sunken desert temple. Jeremy, I'm not your enemy. Tell me where to go. How do I find the temple? No, we can't. I have to make this sacrifice. God damn it, Jeremy. I'm gonna save you. Don't worry. Just let his ass go, bro. Tim with the super chat. Thank you so much. Say sarcophagus again. I said it the right time now. Just had to get the, you know, bang off the rust. How do you save someone who doesn't want to be saved? You don't. Well, he's going to get saved no matter what. I just need to find the temple somehow. So we gotta learn the numbers again. Outer is the shit. I gotta look at the uh two three four five six seven eight nine There it is. Stage chair?
Sunken desert temple. I better get down there. Okay, so we got an anchor there. Looking for a rope. Nephron Car lies under our camp. Despite all efforts, that unholy site did not collapse, but sink beneath the sand. The pharaoh is long dead, his name meticulously stricken from all ancient writing. But that stage meant for blood and terror remains. The temple is said to be lightless, built to harbor all the haunters of the dark found in the very depths of our universe. Calling on the gods meant creating a bridge between our world and theirs. The terrible Aldebaran of Taurus, the Black Sun, was seen as the most important star in the night sky. Because, according to the Kitab al -Azif, it was said to be the home of that crawling chaos known as Nyalahotep. Through ancient mechanisms, it was said that the priests could open shafts channeling the light emitted by that strange stone called the Shining Trapezohedron. Several streams pooled together above the statue of that dark man would then be sent through space towards the Black Sun, a message to the gods. The gifts bestowed on the sender are completely undocumented, but often assumes to involve dark blood pacts, where souls are traded for malicious miracles. Damn. So I'll take it that stone is uh, what's inside that little compass thing, or the little uh, thing we keep spinning around the talisman. Place something on all of these, maybe.
go. Okay, so we got a lens. We can fit it on here. Pull this. And we adjust the lens. This one looks operational. Good work. So is it a one-time use? Yeah, you can't take the lens back. with the super chat what do duck hunters eat with their cheese quackers really <laughs> oh hold on then we got to keep that aim there so we can take that lens off or no maybe we do got to have it aimed there we'll check that here in a sec alpha thank you so much for the super I appreciate it man for that one. We 
mods on this one. What's that? Oh, there's a lens in there. I don't know where I'm supposed to aim these, necessarily. Thought it would let me get that lens. Does it show which lens? You can't see the map when you're in these um, memories. It's not the star pattern, it's... This one's star mm. pattern. Look at that.
It worked. Yeah, killing them with the lens would probably have been uh, more cost effective. It's not like I spent a whole lot of ammo anyway, so. Like, what time's dinner gonna be done? Probably like seven thirty. So that was the last lens that we needed for that top side. I think that one we shoot right at the front of it. And then we combined all the, the lasers and shoot it down at the thing on the ground.
ready to collapse. Acknowledge psychological trauma, break through barriers of self-deceit, tempermanic behavior. These are the dark man's terms. The contract. Huh? found something. Great. Was it alcohol? God, no. I just got the wind knocked out of me. I think I know how to break the contract with the dark man. What exactly does that mean? Everything going back to normal. Uh, all right. Uh, I found some more information on Dorsetto and the patients. There are some seriously strange things going on here. I'm pretty sure two of the patients are dead and maybe even the clerk. Oh, yeah. I kind of just gave up on worrying about that. Well... Just keep your eyes open, I suppose. What were you doing again? Jeremy made a pact with the Dark Man to keep all the madness locked inside your setup. All right. I'm gonna break it. I just have to... Where is it? Where's the talisman? It's around your neck. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. I worry, detectives. Don't. I'm fine. I worry that you're not much help on this case. But at least you're a good distraction. Trust me. You're getting your money's worth. At this rate, I'm an absolute bargain. She kind of feeling like I'm we're crazy, dude. So she's not experiencing any of the shit that we're experiencing right now. He must first acknowledge psychological trauma in order to proceed. The lying must stop, so we can break through the barriers of self-deceit. Finally, temper manic behavior. Medicine has failed me. Nothing can be done to dispel the hardwood curse. Only the sacrificial dagger may release the despair from Jacob's eye. Yet, doing so would be the doom of Dacetto. Let this case of mine be a weapon for once. I accept your demands, oh, crawling chaos. Build your prison around this godforsaken hospital. When evil has been starved, I will stay buried forever. Thanks, Bob.
had to be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You run into that detective fella. Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he wanted a good guy. Well, you know, not good. Will he be all right with her coming? Praise the mother. He don't need to know about all that. Just help the job. Just calm down. It ain't time yet. God, it hurts. As far as I can tell, Detective Combi seems to be solving problems, not causing them. Just be ready in case he starts anything. I'm so confused. Ah, uh, Zach, I appreciate the love, man. The two orderlies still hadn't found Jeremy. Okay, so now we gotta break into Dr. Gray's office. This room had corruption. I didn't remember it being like this, though. No, it wasn't this bad. These flowers and stuff were pretty good when we came here before. Christ, what the hell was that? It's blocked. It's blocked. Lunacy in the Astarte Artist Colony, a monograph by Yael Klein. In early 1909, the old Derseto plantation outside of New Orleans was turned into an artist's colony. Three famous European artists rented the house and the surrounding land from the owner, the Ledoux family. The colony was chiefly run by Sebastian Cortez, who was playfully dubbed the captain by his collaborators, William Argus and Heinrich Kassel. The colony existed for six years, until one day all twelve members disappeared without a trace. It is widely believed that their disappearance is connected to the disastrous hurricane that passed through on September 29, 1915, but nothing truly supports this claim. What is known is their frequent participation in New Orleans nightlife, their love for hosting parties, and their elaborate contributions to the Mardi Gras parades as the Pirates of Ponchartrin. Accounts of their lifestyle can be found in almost every gossip column. It can effectively be summed up as carefree and bohemian. In late June 1909, the name Astarte first appeared in the newspapers. Cortez said the name came to him as he was painting. There is never any claim to knowing about the ancient Phoenician fertility goddess with the same name before this time. His fellow colonist Heinrich Kassel did know, because he later produced sculptures that show clear references to ancient idols of the goddess. It's impossible to know for sure how this name suddenly made an appearance, but it is interesting because of Derseto's history. I got a question. So, what was the origination of Mardi Gras? Like, how old is it? Uh, you know, I, you, obviously, I hear about it as like just where you go and get beads and get drunk and doing shit like that. Like, what was the actual origination, like, purpose behind Mardi Gras? And like, what, like, how old? I thought somebody offhand would just be history, history buff. Mardi Gras was from 1862. 1699? That's not even a thing.
Can get around this way. Somebody really blocked it. Must be a spare key to Dr. Gray's office. I need the key. Got mm. a clerk safe. Combination for this. Maybe Jeremy did. Mr. White's was the clerk. So maybe we gotta check Mr. White's. All right, time to get Jeremy out of that contract so we can get the hell out of here. Something tells me I'm gonna have to put my talisman to use. <clears throat> so Mr. Wace's room. I don't think he had a room. The clerk. There it is, right off the sitting room here. WC. Detective Conby, good to see you again. Solved your case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, Detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids, ain't they great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink, we 
pay tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. The usual. Then why all the excitement? There is just something about tonight. Something's different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out, and things will begin again. That sounds strangely threatening. You should come. What the hell is she talking about? God damn, bro. Oh, God damn it, Grace. Stay put for once. He dropped a key. First floor hall key. Better hold on to these. Wouldn't want them to get lost. Well, this is the washroom. Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room seemed to have been empty for so long, but that wasn't allowed to be true. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside, he would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. But those were not the right numbers. That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office. Boom, there it is. Found it. Nine one girl thank you so much for the 10 gifted everybody receives one of those welcome to the family i really appreciate the love the last guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption i must write this down because if i understand the condition sufficiently it could make me deny this fact at a later date. And there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction, as some who came in contact with the guest seemed to adopt a new worldview in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this worldview, some memories became unmanageable and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed, or they never existed in the first place. Who wrote this? There has never been a guest in the empty room. Dr. Gray's office, all to myself. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. Cassandra's I things? have finished tidying up Miss Beauregard's belongings. I will leave it to you to contact her agent and have them collect her things. I found one of Grace's drawings she might want back, along with this key in her room, which I believe you've been looking for, Mrs. Thompson. Mm -hmm. 
Brants. Okay, so we were, I was wondering when we would get that globe piece. This is where McCarthy has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. Stairwell key. Dearest Dr. Manzetti, I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others, effectively laying the ground for mass delusion. I am writing to you in hope that you can give me some guidance. Beyond my ambition to avoid devastating surgery on my patient, I have grown worried about my own defenses. The words of my patient are deranged, yet they often resonate with something primitive within me. I have tried photographing his brain with x-rays. It was surprisingly difficult to get good results. Dark blotches on the plates kept obscuring all details. My patient looked at the bad plates and cried out in terror, telling me the dark areas was the shadow of the worm eating him from inside. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. I hope this is a sign that my mind is not as receptive to the madness as I had feared. After further inquiry, my patient described the shadows inside his mind as some kind of chthonic monstrosity that wants to undermine his sanctuary. This is clearly a reference to a place he calls Teroea, a sort of library or convent that works as a psychological haven. With this imaginary haven threatened by this Chthonian, he has now constructed another less pleasant hiding spot. Lately, he has been bringing up a metaphor of a steamboat that has run aground, that he feels like he needs to start the engines and reverse, but he is afraid that the hole in the hull would cause the whole ship to sink. I've been watching him turn this metaphor into reality for the last week. He knows it's made up, but he is doubling down, trying to make it a real memory. I feel certain that this is my chance to break through the barriers of his self-deceit. Questions, yo, how are we tripping so bad, dude? Tell you, it's the drinks, it's the alcohol chat that keep feeding us. Got a spike, man. There's something missing. Dr. Gray was somehow mixed up in this business with the dark man, Detective Conway decided. He had to be. So I'm pretty sure we solved this, maybe? No. Find her missing drawing.
Okay, so where is the empty room? Uh, I think it's on the first floor. Yep, first floor. Hit this hallway here. I don't think we've been down this hallway yet. This has been locked the whole game. No, no. It has to stop! I gotta make it stop! Can't aim at that dude. Surprisingly neat. Maybe I've been selling that old bar fly short. Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. We can't get in there. That's where Grace's old treasure is. Sometimes I think this place makes me worse. That Dosetto might be my grave. A coffin made of ostentatious architecture. A Taj Mahal for the drunken depressed. There's something about Dersetto. Something about Dr. Gray. Like we all pretend that we're here to get better. When in fact we are here to be forgotten. Guess we're looking for something to open that up. We were supposed to go check the empty room, dude. I can't take this much more. This has to end. Where are we going right now? Charles, how have you been? Holy shit, coming in dropping the 20 gifted, man. It's good to see you, Charles. How you been? Everybody receives one of those memberships. Welcome to the fam. Those are blood. Blood.
need the key. Radiography, patient Jeremy Hartwood, date June 14, 1930. Plates, Jeremy's skull proved difficult to capture properly. Partial radiographs worked best. A complete picture of the brain can be assembled by piecing three plates together. Observations, even when looking at an assembled version, a shadow covers significant parts of Jeremy's brain possible tumor, but more likely that the equipment is failing. Jeremy reacted strongly to the pictures and claimed to see a giant clay worm eating and displacing his memories. Notes. While this exercise has left me nowhere closer to an answer, I feel confident that a Burkhart lobotomy should sever all necessary parts. Sure. To think they, uh, like a lobotomy to. <laughs> like, how did they ever think that? W was there any real science behind a lobotomy? The science of shutting people. Yeah, I mean that. Hypothetical psychosurgery based on the ideas by Burkhart and the St. Petersburg research could end up saving Jeremy's mind. Severing the connections around the frontal lobe would certainly solve most mental afflictions. The procedure would be brutal in performance as well as in efficiency. An ice pick pushed through the edge of the eye and into the skull would untether the nerves like Alexander cutting the Gordian knot. As this would likely leave Jeremy in a very different condition, all other paths should first be explored. The medical instrument I would need for this lobotomy is missing and I should have Waits order a new one. Surgery room key. Electrical fuse. I'm missing another fuse. pictures all together. Second, if I do. Another fuse there.
We're starting to move both the middle ones, though. I knew there was one of them that moved both the middle ones down. It's not all the same. It's not all the same brain, I don't think. There it is. <clears throat> it's was like, this, the, these pieces aren't all the same brain. Did that give us a number or something? Part of a statue.
And we're back here. Oh, perfect time to have a look around this place. So four six four one. You can't rotate them now. It was just a. I didn't know exactly what it was because it didn't really look like a worm. It was like a weird shape. Come on, Jeremy. I'll figure something out. I'll get the boat running. Little brother, how you doing, though, by the way? wedged itself right into the bayou. If I get the motor started, I could try reversing back into the river. Is 
Isn't that what Jeremy thought he wanted to do? Remember in the letter that the... It was the letter from, uh... That he feels like he needs to start the engines in reverse. But he is afraid that the hole in the hall will cause the whole ship to sink. Bro, that thing was it was fast to tell too. Jeremy, where are you? through there, right? No drop down. No climb up. This boat stuck, stuck. <laughs> this door is locked. So drop down right there. Max with the 21 months, dude. I appreciate you showing love. The one thing I don't like is when you arm these things, that's it. Like if you let go of the button, he just throws it. God damn, that did a lot of damage. Holy shit.
things are ridiculous, dude. Get over two feet of snow now. Doesn't even look like it's snow. It was snowing earlier. It looked like it stopped, though. Two feet of snow. Your winter time's supposed to be over, chat. squishy things I only got one heal left I just need something to break it. Go around the back of the ship real quick. I want to see if there's uh, any heals back here. Oh, some more mollies. Damn, so we got endless amount of melee weapons there. State of emergency, Jesus Christ. Empty gas can. I just want some heals, dude. This definitely needs fuel. Okay. Turn off the valve. So now we got the filled gas can.
Alright, so I thought... Jeremy was calling out for help, but Combi couldn't figure out where the voice was coming from. supposed to go. I thought I was supposed to go back in. It's like that light bolt, I knew it was gonna be for something, but I didn't know what. That's how we get down to this area. Ugh. Once we got the power on.
finally got some heals. Thirty years ago, Frederick needed me to die. You're not making any sense, Jeremy. Find hey. your focus. Hey! I cheated everyone. I didn't play my part. Hey! I escaped hey. my doom. My destiny. Again, find hey. your focus. Hey, I'm right here. What the hell is going on? Now everything is wrong. Nothing is in hey. play. I'm right here! Calm down, Mr. Conby. What do you want? Did... Were you... Were you not talking to Jeremy right now? I haven't seen Jeremy all day. Are you all right, Detective? No. Actually, actually, I don't... I don't think so. Well, maybe. I'm gonna go... Look for Jeremy. Good. Let me know if you find him. That was Jeremy's self-deceit, a steamboat stuck in the mud? I'm not going to pretend I understand any of that. What a bunch of psychoanalytic nonsense. Something weird going on here, chat. Definitely start over island vibes. That's what I said last stream. I was like, yo, wouldn't it be some wouldn't it be some crazy shit if we're patient here the whole fucking time? You know what I mean? And it's just And all of this is us. Jeremy's a made up character that we This is my room. What? I belong here. Terceto stands on a breeding ground for the grotesque, a temple devoted to rebellious growth, the most ugly and cancerous side of nature. You may be able to shield your psyche for a while, but rest assured your soul will come to pray to that hideous god in time. That is the story of every man and woman who gather around that ancient arbor. They all croak, bark, and bleat because their own bodies are afraid and they wish to repel the evil those words conjure. Ia! Ia! Instead of that blasphemous name, they gossip in hushed whispers the name of their seto, Astarte, and the Black Goat of the Woods. Their seto stands... I recognize this view. We should have known, the second we walked in, something was weird. Remember when he seen the little girl and he said, you look familiar, and then we seen a little again, a, a girl again, he asked her again, why does she look familiar? I know that number. Where's that from? I did this. I wrote that. I 
I know the combination. I carry it with me. Well... It's my badge number. Six nine two. Detective Karn, look for the girl. Detective, I have made many discoveries in my case. The child we want is safe, thanks to good people like me and you. We're so similar, but you don't see all the things I do. To find your man, Jeremy, you also need to look for the girl. It has always been that way. The young deliver us all. You should have a look in my room. There's a piece of the puzzle you will need. Take care now. My coffee. Detective. How long have I been here? Where's McCarthy's room? Second floor. First floor. End of the hall. Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. Use the coin to take this off. All right, so now we got Grace's picture. Why would McCarthy lock this up? Was he trying to keep Grace from completing his shame? If so, couldn't she have just made another drawing? What the hell happened in here?
this looks familiar. How am I back at the office? Jeremy's never been here. Writing desk That's here. That's me, isn't it? How long has it been since I drowned myself in drink and depression? And it all felt so peaceful, slipping away into oblivion. A welcoming dark voice wrapped around my mind like a heavy blanket. It turned off suddenly as I woke up from the sound of my office door closing shut. A messenger had left a telegram from Mrs. Saunders. She had a lead on where to find her husband and her kidnapped daughter. God, I used to drink so much. Teddy Saunders goes mad, kidnaps child. When was this exactly? What case was I working? I think I need to figure out where I'm going first. And one more thing. Photograph of a man. Check out Thornhill. I remember this case. Some kid got taken by her father, headed out of state, but he had made a mistake by selling a painting that his wife actually cared about to a collector named Thornhill to fund his venture. That's how I tracked him down. At least I think so. case can't be squeaky clean. sold a valuable painting to Thornhill, hoping the money would carry him to wherever he was going. The painting, now leaning on an easel in Thornhill's bedroom, had a certain mesmerizing gloom that seemed to call out to me, telling me I was needed for something important. I felt myself falling into the painting, only being brought back by Thornhill, thrusting an address to a Hotel St. George into my hand, and asking me to get the hell out.
Hell's the new weapon. Chris with the super chat, thank you so much. Probably some dumb gambling debt growing in size for each payment missed. I punched one of them out, and I sent the others packing. Just stupid move. They'd be back. Number 21st through the 25th, 28th. I found him. In the hotel ledger, I recognized the handwriting of the signature. Ted Stryker. It was him. I could feel it. It was the kidnapper I was hunting. I put on my knuckles and hurried up to his room. Something about that name, Ted Stryker, rings a bell. Feels vaguely familiar. Thornhill's business card. I recognize this room, but I didn't catch up with them here. I must have followed them, but where? DeWitt boarding school. Fifty dollars for the Kingsport painting. Yeah. 
That's right, he was running away, ditching his old life and marriage in New Orleans to find something better in Tallahassee. And he took his daughter with him against the will of the mother. That's why she hired me. But I stopped him. I caught up with him at the Pearl River Bridge. Pearl River. This is where I caught up with them. This is what the dark man wanted me to revisit. But I'm still not seeing it. What am I forgetting? Now I'm super like intrigued to see what the uh, what the other story is gonna be like, playing as the girl. Is have, if any of you guys have played is the girl side of the story like a lot different than this? Maybe it'll all make sense at the end. I can't believe I didn't recognize him. I looked a little different back then, I suppose. Was any of this real? How do you mean? This day just... So much is happening. I can't. I think I've lost my head. Do you need me to apologize? I mean... I am sorry. I don't think I need to begin to explain. You, you're just a kid, Grace. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean for it to happen. Lies. More lies. No, really. I thought I was being a good guy by handing you over to your mother. I didn't know. I, I couldn't have known that she wouldn't care about you. I don't know how this works. What is this for? Some form of admission of guilt. Maybe acceptance. It's what the dark man wants. I guess we just watch my father die again then. You think he's alive? I know he is. He's down there, scared that he won't be able to get out. That he will drown with his daughter again. What are you saying? We gotta save him! We? Do it yourself! I'm down there with him, remember? Wait, what? Can I really save them? This all happened so long ago. I have to find a way to get down there. I have to see it with my own eyes. There was a boat at the house where I entered. If I can raise the bridge, I should be able to get to the car.
This must be where the bridge is operated. Nothing's happening. It's like something's holding it back. Well, maybe the fucking giant tendrils. Are you okay? Don't leave me alone. What the hell have you been doing? What's going on here? Look at this mess! I, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Thompson. Don't make me kick you out of this house! Now get out! <sighs> hey, Detective. Mr. Carnby. I'm really worried about you. I'm okay. I just need to catch my breath for a moment. This place? It's... There are some very disturbed figures around here. And I don't think it's just the patients. I've been reading some things about how Dorsetto has a deranging effect on people. I think it might explain... things. What? Just take it easy, okay? 
I'm gonna go find a way into Dr. Gray's apartment. I want to know what he's hiding. Emily, don't worry. I think I'm close. I'm gonna set everything right. Just be careful. Um, his apartment was on the other side here, right? Second floor, servant stairs, yep, top of the servant stairs. Yeah, this, she's literally helped us with nothing at all. I literally am like, oh, what the hell's... Detective, am I glad to see you. Lock the door, will you? I don't think Dr. Gray would appreciate us snooping around. What's going on here? This feels so strange. What's up with the camera angle change? What well, old school on us? missing. You went old school on his chat. What did you do? I was just rearranging the books. Well, come on, let's check it out. Was this what the old the old game was like, chat? I think I'm beginning to understand. Dr. Gray is dealing with some kind of mass delusion. What were you saying about mass delusion? Dorsetto seems to have a deranging effect on people living close by. It has a history of creating cults devoted to some nature goddess. Even the name Dorsetto refers to the cult existing here before the Civil War. Dorsetto was the name of an ancient fertility goddess worshipped in Syria. Dr. Gray and his friends, however, seem to prefer... the Black Goat of the Woods with a Thousand Young, or Shubnigroth. And that name can only have come from my uncle's twisted mind. I think this is like a little cameo or like Good to finally meet you, to the Mr. Original. Hartwood. I'm here on the behalf of your brother Philip. You were expecting me, weren't you? Yes. You're from Desetto, no? That's right. I just wanted to ask you a few questions to see if there is anything I can do to help you and your family. Okay. I understand you're full of imagination. You make up a lot of things. I suppose. And you obsess over them, blurring reality and fiction. Sometimes. Do you want to tell me about the Dark Man? No. No, I, I don't. That's all right. Perhaps there is something else you can tell me. Something you know to be made up, but you hold dear. One? 
John? Who's John? No, Juan Luis Jorge. Wait there a moment. Here, take a look. Is he... Oh, he is the author. It's a magnificent book. Life-changing, even. The real Juan is long dead, but I like to think of him as my, my friend. My most beloved friend. I see. Do you often do this? Fantasize about people you read about? No. No. Well, there is Jacob. Who is Jacob? Turn to the last page. Oh, it's a newspaper article. The Prisoner of Ice, Jacob van Ostart. Is he also your beloved friend? Oh, no, Doctor. Not at all. He is the fire that fights fire. Yes, I think it's clear your overstimulated imagination, this mania, needs to be tempered for you to live a normal life. I know your family calls it the Heartwood Curse, but I want you to know that there is nothing supernatural about your condition. It's all inside your head. And with that, I'm very qualified to deal with. In time, you will be cured. In time, in time. Yes, in time we will exercise all your demons, all the dark men. Yeah! Please, Mr. Hartwood, calm yourself. What happened? Oh, don't you worry your little head about it, Miss Hartwood. Your uncle and I just had our first breakthrough. That mark on the floor looks like talisman positions, but from which direction should I look at it? The Snake Dagger, a monograph by Yael Klein. In Ludwig Prinz's book on pagan rituals called The Mystery of the Grave, as translated by Nicholas Vachy, there are several references to a sacrificial dagger called the Snake Dagger. It has long been thought of as a poor translation of the original text. That it would be more appropriate with worm dagger from the Latin vermis cultrum. This seems natural following the recent consensus that the original title of Prince book, the vermis mysteris, should literally translate to the mystery of the worm. However, this would take away from Vahi's great effort at translating the underlying meaning of the words and revealing several cultural beliefs. While Prin certainly was using the term worm as a symbol or synecdoche for death and the dead, which is made clear by the contents of the book, in the case of the dagger, we shouldn't be too hasty to dismiss his translation. Reading through Vahi's correspondence with his patron, it appears that he had more than just the Latin text at his disposal. Vahi had dug up Prin's living relatives and uncovered several cross-referenced historical texts, and an actual snake dagger. The dagger was dated to the early Middle Kingdom of Egypt, and had such a clear shape of a wave that Vahi considered calling it the sinusoidal blade. Knowing the full story, it seems prudent that he chose to translate it as snake and not worm. There are several reasons why this choice of word helps us understand the pagans that Prin's book attempts to describe. Now, we actually found a, a dagger. The symbolic value of the shape becomes more apparent when reading about the use for the dagger. In the passage of possession and exorcism, we find the snake dagger poisons the poisoner within the victim and is therefore pacified. Where the literal text would tell us that the worm dagger trumps the demon possessing the victim, it tells us nothing of their reasoning. Only that somehow this dagger wins against the demon, like it had the better hand in poker. Vahi's translation allows us to follow the underlying logic to the ritual magic that is being performed. Poison the poisoner. Sounds like fighting fire with fire that to hurt the demon possessing its victim, the priests would have to fight back with a power that is known to the evil they are fighting. 
The snake dagger is therefore not only a good way to describe its form, but it also helps us understand how it could be thought of as a useful tool for exorcism. Finally, it also helps us understand their relationship to lunacy, that it was thought of as something poisoning the mind rather than controlling it. What is also interesting to note is that the possessed are always considered poisoned in their head and not their heart. The snake dagger always went to the eye of the possessed, leaving them partially blind, if they had the good luck to survive. This looks like the talisman. You think all of them are in this cult business? Even Jeremy? I'm not sure any of them have a choice at this point. We just need to find a way to stop all of this. There's another room right here. Got it. Huh. Has that been there this whole time? There are tank controls. Dark man, you can't save him. Well, I've done everything he wanted so far, and there's just one more thing on the list. I expect him to keep his promise and return Jeremy unharmed. Get out, detective, while you still can. Time did the clock stop at? Hey. So now we just gotta figure out what numbers to set it to.
You okay? You look a little frazzled. Just... stupid telephone. I know. I tried calling the police earlier. The telephone is completely dead. It's not... Yeah, no, the telephone isn't working. Miss Hartwood, I think you're gonna want to see this. Is there something in the closet? Yeah, there is. You don't see the very obvious gate leading to whatever Jeremy's madness is serving up next? I don't understand. Are you making some kind of fashion metaphor? I'm sorry, I don't have time for this. Can you just tell me what you're doing? You don't see this. It's fine. It's fine. Catch you later. Are you going inside the closet? Yeah. You got a problem with that? No. Do what you think is right, detective. Sorry, I didn't mean to. So what, from her Goodbye, point of view, Mr. am I just gonna be just standing in the fucking closet, just pretending, dude? Just fucking balled up in there like pew, pew, pew. Does anybody know how close this is to the end of the game? Or uh, at least the end of his story? found the ancient Stellarium perched on a cliff facing the Arctic Ocean after a day of sailing due north of the Eskimo encampment. Jacob van Ostadt was our most keen member of the expedition. He had been chasing down the source of a peculiar type of crystallized metal present in several sacred items among the natives on the northeast coast of Greenland. The site was a remarkable find for any explorer all enraptured in our search for enlightenment and meaning. The surviving architecture seemed almost unearthly in origin and astonishingly sophisticated. The metal Jacob was searching for was abundant, almost ubiquitous. We were so taken by our find that we were surprised by the sun falling below the horizon. As we quickly picked up our gear, ready to head back to our camp, Jacob von Ostadt declared that he wanted to stay. He was adamant. We begged him to reconsider. The night would be getting colder by the hour, and we feared for all our safety. Jacob refused, threatening us with violence if we wouldn't leave him alone. As the snowfall turned heavier, we left him there on his own. The next day, the weather became worse, and we had to spend hours enforcing our shelter as our tents became increasingly useless. The group had written off Jacob, thinking he must be dead. I had an urge to make one final attempt to save him, so I headed out as darkness fell with a handful of flares and headed toward the coast and up the climb, towards the Stellarium. That's when I saw him. Transfixed by a burning sky, that celestial lantern. Jacob keeled over and let out a painful shriek that struck me with such fear and pity. He was crying in agony, for the cold weather had ravaged his flesh. I called out to him, and he turned to face me. His vacant stare held me in place like a needle through a butterfly, and he said, you must leave now, Ashton. Go, and never come back. And so I left.
Hey, you! What are you doing here? What is this place? Turn back, detective. You're not wanted here. Whoa, take it easy. I'm not your enemy. Oh, you're wrong, detective. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Make me do them like that, chat. What in the sons of the forest is this? Line, Jeremy, or ah, maybe that is what you need to temper that mania of yours. to it.
everything! Aren't you happy? Stupid charlatan! What more do you want from me? You want me to lose my mind? Oh, my love! <laughs> Doctor! Baptiste! Thank you, Carpet. I thought you'd be knocked out for the rest of the night. <laughs> Come on out and join us, will you? I'll save you some gumbo. Good to have you back. You gave us all a good scare. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Sorry for manhandling you, but you are being violent. You stabbed Jeremy and then punched Dr. Gray. Are they okay? Jeremy's a little strange, but everything's back to normal. Really? All thanks to you, Combat. You want to try standing up? Well, if it isn't the hero of the day. How are you feeling, Detective? Never better. How about you two? Hey, Jeremy, I didn't do too much damage, did I? Things are fine. Very quiet. What's up with him? Painkillers? No. You see, despite you having the finesse of a one-eyed butcher, you managed to lobotomize, dear Jeremy. I did what? It's actually quite impressive. It's not like I hadn't considered it myself. I just wish Jeremy could have been helped without reducing his personality to that of an oyster. But... He's gonna live. Of course. As long as someone keeps feeding him, he'll outlive the best of us. What the fuck? Glad to see you made it back to Dorsetto. You too, Detective. Make sure to stay for the festivities. It's no Mardi Gras, but it ain't bad. Good to see you back on your feet, Detective. Have some gumbo. Thanks. I'll save it for later. That is one impressive tree. More impressive than you could ever imagine. Alright, tell me, what the hell's about to happen here? Every year we have a little turn-the-page ceremony by the tree. It's symbolical. Symbol... It's like life has its cycles of grief and happiness. You know, just like a tree facing the seasons. Things change, but remain the same. Hey, kid. What are you up to? Preparing for the ceremony. I don't want to disappoint Mother.
Everyone knows what to do? Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, you need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. What's up with the super chat? How you doing, brother? Hell are their praises and abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Ever Hear their praises and, and abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. And take pity on us. Take so pity on us. Ever their praises and abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. And take pity on us. Are you crazy? This is the human cost of Grace, stop! I can't let that monster leave Dorsetto. I have to stop it.
Also, thank you, thank you for again for the super chat, but I appreciate you, man. That was ridiculous, dude. Something was killing me in one hit. Detective. Oh, what the hell was that? I try to tell you. There was so much evidence. Their devotion to the black goat was like nothing I've ever seen before. I felt so dumb believing any of it, but I'm glad I did. Are you okay? Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, buddy. How are you doing, sweetie? I kind of like it. You ruined everything, but I'm not mad. Fuzzle, seriously, dude, just dropped 25 gifted, man. You didn't have to do that, but I didn't beat it on the first time. I really appreciate the love, though, dude. Holy crap, everybody receives a uh, membership. Welcome to, to the fam. To New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. We're leaving. Can I come? I thought you said you didn't need saving. Don't leave her. She's important. Of course we're taking her with us. Wait, what? Wait, so we were we actually crazy or was it the tree and the black magic that was making us crazy? <laughs> Ghastly. <laughs> I mean, we still got one whole other side of the story. We got that girl side of the story. It might, might, uh, Patch some of the holes, dude. Jeez. Oh, well, that's some good stuff, guys. Uh, am I muted? No, I should. I muted the game sound, but. Um. Damn. That had that Alan Wake style, like, mind fuck to it, dude. Had me all types of confused. But, um, all right, guys, I, mean, I got to end this here. Uh, we obviously beat the, the, the first side of the game, I guess you could say. So if you guys do want to see the other side of it, which probably be another two streams like this one, not very long, uh, from the, the girl's perspective, hey, just drop a like, drop a comment, let me know, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll, we can definitely check out the other side of the game, too. Um, that'd be pretty cool. And uh, I'll be doing one more stream here tonight. So literally, I'm going to be putting this stream down and be starting one up like here within a few minutes because uh, yeah, we got one more thing I want to try to knock out before the end of the night. We'll be checking out a little indie game um, that I found to be pretty interesting. So uh, thank you guys again so much. Hopefully, I'll see a bunch of you guys in the next stream. Like I said, I'll, I'll be going live probably within like 15 minutes or so. Um, so again, thank you. Thank you. If I don't see you guys in the next stream, you have a great rest of your night. And for everybody else, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.